we want to consider functions that have two inputs and one output. Remember, for these functions, it's possible to look at the graph because that would only require uh, two perpendicular directions for the inputs and, and another perpendicular direction for the outputs. So we could we actually think of the graph as some sort of surface for every x, y value we compute a z value. And so if we do that for every point in the plane, then that's going to create some kind of surface. So the graph is a surface, but another way to visualize it without using three dimensions, just in two, is to look at all of the points on the surface that have the same value of z. So in other, in other words, a level set, or in this case, we're thinking about taking a surface and intersecting it with a plane of constant level that would create a level curve. So. Here's this function, z equals x squared plus y squared. You can see the two inputs are x and y, and then the output is z. And we actually know what the surface looks like. It's an, it's an elliptic uh, paraboloid, right? Because if we freeze x, we have z equals y squared plus a constant, which is a parabola. If we freeze y, we have z equals x squared plus a constant. That's a parabola. If we freeze z, then we have ellipses. So it's an elliptic paraboloid. So it opens up in the xy plane, and it opens up in the or sorry, it opens up in the xz plane, and it opens up in the, it's a parabola that opens up in the yz plane, and then we have these, these uh, circular elliptical cross sections I kind of missed there. Okay, so we know what the shape is, but this asks us to look at it from the point of view of the level curve. So what we can do is we can think about setting z at different values, right? So if z equals 0, then we have 0 equals x squared plus y squared. That is a single point, right? The only way that, that x squared plus y squared would be 0 it would be if both of these numbers were 0. So there's the z equals 0 level set. If we set z equal 1, then 1 equals x squared plus y squared. So that's a circle of radius 1. All the points on the circle of radius 1 in the input space, in xy space, all, everything on this point gets mapped to a height of 1. So this is the z equal 1 level curve or level set. Um, if we set z equal to 2, then we have 2 equals x squared plus y squared. Let's see, this is a circle of radius root 2. Root 2 is about 1.4, so this circles in a little bit closer. Yeah, so there's the z equal 2 level set, the circle of radius root 2. If we set z equal to 3, then we have 3 equal x squared plus y squared. So circle of radius root 3, it's about 1.7. So you can see that these level sets are getting closer together the further out I go from the origin. So if we set z equal to 4, maybe I'll just do last one, one last one. We get 4 equals x squared plus y squared. That's a circle of radius 2. So getting closer and closer together. Well, if you, if you know from a from a topographic map, when the when the uh, contour lines get closer together, that means that's steeper, right? And you can see that's indicated actually when you look at the surface. The further you get out from from the z-axis, you can see the steeper the graph is getting, and that's manifested here when we look at these contour lines and the fact that they get closer and closer together. If we wanted to make a prettier picture, prettier picture, we could use maple to graph these. So if we want to, if we want to, we could we could take maple here. Um, first thing we want to do is to load the, the plotting package so that we can display multiple graphs together. And uh, then we can uh, think about graphing these. What we, what we want to do to join a bunch of plots is to give each plot a name and uh, don't display them right away. Save it and display them all together at the end. So what we could do is um, we could use implicit plot and then we can just give the equation. Let's see. When z equals 0, we had x squared plus y squared equals 0. Let's do this. Um, since, since we went up to like z equals 4, that gave us circles of radius 2. Let me just do it with x between negative 2 and 2, and y between negative 2 and 2. So we could, we could plot those. Um, let me, we did actually five different level sets. So what I'm doing is I'm, I copy this and I'm just repasting it. So in order to get a, a return, I, I hold down Shift Enter because if I hit actually enter, it will run my command. So when I need to get extra lines, I hold down Shift and then hit Enter. I'm changing the names on all of these and changing the level sets. So to 1, 
z equals 1, z equals 2, z equals 3, and z equals 4. And now I've ended all of these in a colon, which means that that suppresses the output. Now what I'm going to do is to display all of them in one fell swoop here, p4 through p5. The names of these plots, I just chose them to be somewhat descriptive, so p for plot, plot 1, p2, plot 2, p3, plot 3, and so on. Okay, put a semicolon on that so you don't suppress the output. Um, uh, what have I done wrong here? Oh, I've got a spelling error in here. I did implicity plot. <laughs> okay, so implicit plot is the name of the command. Let's see what we get now. Hmm. Yep, we get our our circles plotted here. So we could look at that a little bit larger, but that's the that's the basic graph.